Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering the photosynthesis topic of the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is the, is the organelle where the photosynthesis reaction takes place. And there are two stages of it, uh, which you are required to know. So the first stage is the light dependent reaction, which happens in the thylakoid in the granule. So if we're looking at the chloroplast, so we have these thylakoid discs and a full stack of these discs is called a granule, um, which is shown there. So the light dependent reaction, which is dependent on light, happens in the thylakoid membranes. Light independent stage of the reaction and this happens in the stroma and the stroma is the um, the space and the matrix which is surrounding the thylakoid membrane. Right so now we will look at the light dependent stage or the light dependent reaction in more details. I'll be going through the main mark points from the specification which you should be which you are required to know. So Note, note these down, I'll be summarizing them later on as well. So first what happens is that there is a um, the photoionization, so basically a photon of light, so for example from the sun, uh, would hit the chlorophyll um, and what, what this does, so the electrons inside the chlorophyll are excited, so excited is the word that you should be using, so they basically move to a higher energy level and this causes them uh, them to leave the chlorophyll. So what it does to the chlorophyll is it oxidizes it because um, if electrons leave the chlorophyll and um, this would leave them with a positive charge uh, which is oil, if you remember oil rig oxidation um, is loss reduction is gain so the there is a loss of electrons therefore it is oxidation. All right, so the electrons and that have been lost from the chlorophyll passed along the electron carriers. So these, which is also known as the electron transport chain in a series of redox reactions. So what this means is, for example, if the electrons move to the first carrier protein and th this would cause the carrier proteins to be reduced as, as, it, as it's gaining electrons. But now as the electrons move to the next carrier protein, it reduces the next carrier protein. But now because the, the electrons are, have moved from the first one to the second one, so it's basically lost these electrons. So now it becomes a, a oxidized carrier protein. And this would happen again um, with the second one as, as the third one is reduced the second one loses the electron and that's why it is oxidized. So this is why um, we say that it, the, the electrons pass along the, the carrier proteins in a series of redox reactions because redox is basically um, oxidation and reduction happening at the same time. And as they keep pass, as they pass through the, um, the, um, carrier, the electron carriers, they lose energy so um, fr from the chlorophyll they had high energy but as they passed from the the electron carriers they lose energy along the electron transport chain so the energy that is being lost is used to move the h plus ions so the h plus ions here which are located in the stroma so they're outside the thylakoid and the energy is used to move this and um, these H plus ions from the stroma and um, to the thylakoid space. So as you can see there, so they're moving from the stroma and to the thylakoid um, thylakoid space. All right. So what happens next is that these um, H plus ions now, which are located in the thylakoid space, they flow back into the stroma. So where they came from via the enzyme ATP synthase and if you remember from the enzyme topic and the ATP synthase is used to create an ATP from P ADP um, and PI so as, as if I go through that again so what happens is that the H plus ions 
flow back um, into the stroma via this enzyme ATP synthase and as, as they move back ATP is being created from ADP um, and the inorganic phosphate which is the PI. Now what happens now is that there is another chlorophyll so first we had the chlorophyll um, which we also called um, PS2 or the Photosystem 2 but now we have chlorophyll PS1 or Photosystem 1 so the same thing ha happens in the chlorophyll um, PS PS1 now so um, the photon of light hits the chlorophyll, excites electron uh, and again what they do is they uh, leave the chlorophyll via uh, the electron transport chain um, again losing energy as they move through. So this is basically what happened the first time in chlorophyll PS2 and um, the electrons were excited and as they moved uh, along the electron carriers and um, they lost energy so this is basically and um, the same process occurring all right so what happens next now is that the photolysis of water occurs so what happens is that the water molecule a photon of light hits the water molecule and it splits the water molecule into two hydrogen ions and two electrons and a half o2 or basically uh, one oxygen molecule one oxygen um, so now uh, the electrons from the photolysis of water replace uh, the electrons that were lost from chlorophyll um, during the photoionization. So uh, before the electrons uh, were lost from chlorophyll, oxidizing the chlorophyll, but now the chlorophyll is gaining those electrons, so now the uh, chlorophyll is being reduced. And um, the hydrogen ions, so what happens with these? is these are transported across the carry proteins and and the hydrogen ions would reduce the hydrogen carrier NADP so NADP is a coenzyme um, and it's a hydrogen carrier so it basically carries hydrogen with it and it's it, it, it's basically reduced from NADP to NADPH or NADPH2 and um, you can say either of them but it's basically uh, it, it basically becomes reduced NADP and this is the light uh, dependent reaction. Okay so now I will summarize the light dependent stage um, of the photosynthesis. So what happens first is the chlorophyll absorbs uh, and this is a key word uh, just make sure that you use the word absorbs um, um, as this gets you a mark. So chlorophyll absorbs a photon of light and uh, so this can be for example from the sun um, and the electrons in the chlorophyll are excited again this is a key word and basically what, what happens is they're raised to a higher energy level and they would leave the chlorophyll which oxidizes the chlorophyll and, and this is photoionization. So next the electrons pass along a number of electron carriers um, also known as the electron transport chain uh, which is located inside the thylakoid membrane and the electrons move in a series of redox reactions because remember um, they would be reducing a carrier electron carrier um, and as they would move they would be oxidizing that and reducing the other one um, from from the um, from the electron carriers so um, the electrons would lose energy at each stage of the electron transport chain. So remember that when they're released from the chlorophyll, they have a um, very high energy. But as they keep moving from the, um, the electron carriers, um, they lose energy. And the energy that's being lost by the electrons is used to move the hydrogen ions from the stroma in the thylakoid as uh, from the stroma into the thylakoid space and the hydrogen ions would flow back into the stroma so where they came from via the enzyme ATP synthase and this creates ATP from ADP and PI and uh, so this is the chemiosmotic theory so then the photolysis of water occurs so uh, the photon of um, light would hit the um, the uh, water molecule and splitting it up into two um, H plus two electrons and um, a half 
of the molecule um, and the basically the light energy that splits the water into oxygen hydrogen and electrons so the photon of light and the electrons from photolysis reduce the chlorophyll so before the as as uh, the electrons moved out of the chlorophyll it was oxidized but this time it's because the electrons are moving into the chlorophyll and it's being reduced and the hydrogen ions uh, the hydrogen ion from the and the photolysis of water uh, would reduce the carrier uh, NAD the the hydrogen carrier NADP which is which is a coenzyme to NADPH or NADPH2 so it's ba it's basically forming a reduced NADP and from this reaction ATP um, and NADPH so both of these are taken uh, further to the light independent reaction which we will be covering now okay, so now I will be covering the light independent reaction which comes after the light dependent reaction which is also called the Calvin cycle so first we start off with RUBP which is a five carbon compound so what happens is that the and the CO2 comes along and the ribulose biphosphate which is basically RUBP uh, would combine with the CO2 so the CO2 combines with the RUBP um, and this basically forms two molecules of glycerate 3 phosphate um, um, which is also called GP so when RUB, RUBP which is a 5 carbon compound um, binds to the CO2 uh, combines with the CO2 it forms a 6 carbon compound and if we divide this 6 carbon into 2 compounds so this gives us glycerate 3 phosphate which is basically a 3 carbon compound so uh, this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco so, so we form uh, 2 GP or glycerate 3 phosphate from um, RUVP so what happens next now is that the GP is reduced so it's reduced to triose phosphate so TP and it's reduced by the NADPH so the reduced NADP, NADP and the energy is provided by the hydrolysis of ATP and remember that this NADPH and the ATP is coming from the light dependent reaction so next uh, what we have is that the the TP that we have formed so some of the TP um, it, it's mentioned in the specification but it's basically one out of six TP so one out of six triose phosphate is converted into useful organic products and um, such as amino acids and triglycerides so when we have the TP which is a three carbon compound um, the one of the carbons in TP um, goes to form um, useful products such as amino acids and triglycerides so um, because we had two of these three carbon um, the three carbon triphosphates so if one is taken away we are left with five carbons so the sum of the TP um, which is basically uh, five out of six um, carbons um, is used to regenerate RUBP so we would be returning to the cycle now so this is why um, this is called the Calvin cycle as this cycle just carries on and we would we would keep uh, forming um, a carbon and um, we would keep forming useful products um, with one of the carbons and um, that's being used to form the organic products um, as as we have as CO2 being inje injected into the cycle each time and so that's um, how the cycle keeps running um, as the RU as the TP is in the five of the TP is converted into RUBP keeping the cycle running okay so now summarizing the light independent stage or the Kelvin cycle so first we have the rib ribulose bisphosphate so the RUBP uh, which combines with the CO2 and um, so this would form two molecules of glycerate 3 phosphate so 
So the RUBP was a five carbon compound and it, um, it combined with CO2, which had one carbon. So the, the, this had six carbons. So now uh, these six carbons are split up into two, three carbons, uh, three carbon compounds, which is glycerate three phosphate or GP. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. The GP, so the glycerate three phosphate is reduced and uh, to triphosphate, so triphosphate, tri which is also a three carbon compound. Um, and this is this happens by NADPH. So the GP is produced by um, NADPH um, and the energy is provided by ATP. And so what happens is that the when the TP forms, so these some of the TP, so uh, one carbon out of the six carbons in total from the two uh, and triphosphates, so the two TPs is converted into useful organic products such as amino acids or triglycerides. Um, and some of the TP, and uh, so five out of the six, and carbons is used to regenerate the RUBP uh, in the Kelvin cycle. So it regenerates the uh, rubulose bisphosphates and, and it keeps the Kelvin cycle going. So there are some limiting factors of photosynthesis, but there are some common agricultural practices to overcome these limiting factors. So, um, first is the temperature so temperature can be uh, involved with the enzymes such such as the uh, rubisco enzyme so what we can do is we can use heaters such as the paraffin heaters to um, to raise the temperature um, to optimum levels so the reaction happens happens as um, as fast as it can and we can also, as, as the CO2 concentration is a limiting factor as it's involved um, in combining with rubulose by uh, bisphosphate in the light independent reaction. So we can raise the CO2 levels uh, by such as by burning fossil fuels as this would release CO2. Or we could just straight pump the CO2 into the glass houses or the greenhouses where the photosynthesis will be occurring and finally we can uh, so light, light intensity which is also a limiting factor it's involved um, with as as in the light um, dependent stage and we require the phot uh, photons of light for photoionization and um, so uh, exciting the electrons as well as uh, in the photolysis so splitting of the water molecule so what we can do is we can use artificial lights such as LED lights to increase the light intensity to optimum levels.